Hi there. Do you ever find yourself wondering, what do administrators do? Hmm. Maybe you thought about eventually becoming an administrator yourself? Or do you ever just wonder, why do we need administrators? Well, this video is for you. Today, I will tell you about my work in real time as a department chair of a music department. I have been serving in this role for 10 years, so I'm very experienced. And what I will tell you today are things that generally happened at the beginning of uh, spring semesters in my program. So as I sit here, it is January 22, and these are the kinds of activities that I undertake on an annual basis. The main reason that we're all here in academia are to serve students and to elevate their educational experience. So of course, the most important part of my job is taking care of the students. At the beginning of each semester, and this is spring semester, so it's a little different than the fall. But at the beginning of this spring semester, I need to make sure that all the students are registered for the right classes. And so sometimes that involves some advising advice. If they don't know where to go, they usually come to me. A lot of times they may encounter registration block. So the class they want to register for is full or they have a time conflict or um, something's not letting them register because of some kind of a educational system block. And so I'm the person that has to do something called an override, which is I have to go into the specialized system called Banner 9, which you can only access on the network. So I have to do it in my office. I can't do it remotely. And then I remove those blocks uh, for them. Sometimes we have students who enter our program in January. And so in this case, uh, we have to um, audition them, and if they are uh, voted into the program by the faculty, we admit them. Uh, if they're eligible for a scholarship, we provide them with a music scholarship. Uh, we make sure that they have an advisor. We make sure that they're registered for classes. Uh, we make sure that they have access to the building and <laughs> any other type um, access practice rooms that they may need to start their educational journey with us. Sometimes they have to take placement tests, so I have to coordinate all of that to make sure that they're in the right classes if they're a transfer student. So students are priority number one, and uh, it's the my most favorite part of my job. Um, with faculty, um, there are a lot of things to get the semester going. So sometimes we have new faculty, particularly adjuncts, and so we need to make sure that they're all set up in the system, as in they have access to their email, they have access to Canvas, which is their, where their course modules are, they have access to their class roles in the system called Banner Web. Um, make sure that they're set up, and make sure all faculty are set up in the right classrooms, make sure their classes are listed at the right times. Um, make sure they have all the resources they need. I'm also, of course, the budget manager. So at the beginning of the semester, I make sure all the faculty have whatever they need to run their classes, whether that be purchasing music, sometimes purchasing instruments, uh, purchasing office supplies. I mean, whatever have you, I have to approve that and coordinate the purchase of these uh, items. Additionally, I'm also building manager. Um, of our beautiful building Point Extra Hall. And so in addition to making sure the classes are running in the right spaces, uh, now during uh, COVID pandemic, we have extra things. So for example, um, our, our building is locked to everyone except for music faculty, staff, and students. So we need to make sure that everybody who's supposed to be in here has access to their ID card. We need to make sure there's enough PPE for everyone. So that would be masks. Um, make sure that there is enough sanitizer, enough um, aerosol sprays um, so, so that the air is fresh. If, if sometimes we, we have to order air purifiers, um, just all kinds of random things having to do with uh, COVID safety protocols. Uh, for example, we have a beautiful 
um, auditorium, which you will see later in this video, and, and make sure that we have seat covers to mark where uh, if someone comes to a concert where they can sit because we still have uh, social distancing in place and for concerts we mark the seats. So overseeing all of those kinds of logistics uh, for the faculty portion. Um, for the staff, uh, January is when we do uh, staff evaluations. So that is ongoing. Um, other things that are uh, not directly related um, to teaching this semester, but that do happen in relation to the faculty are January is also the time that tenure and promotion portfolios are due to the chair because at my institution, the chair is the first step of the process. They're the ones that, that um, initiate the uh, first level of review um, and uh, render their commendation uh, for or against tenure promotion before it goes uh, further up the chain. So um, as you can see, I have some folders behind me. Um, we also in January begin to plan our course schedule for the summer and uh, next fall. So uh, I coordinate uh, everyone sub submitting uh, suggestions of what courses they need to teach. I am also aware of what needs to be offered, so I'll make sure everything is covered, make sure that everything everybody wants to teach is in line with what needs to happen, um, assign them rooms and, and, and things like this. So uh, designing the schedule for the following year happens at this time. We also uh, calculate faculty teaching loads, and that's how we know if anyone needs to get paid an overload, and if that happens, I need to do the paperwork for that. Um, so that is all the kind of faculty and staff um, and uh, student angle. There is another big hat that music administrators wear, and that is if um, our program is accredited by the National Association of Schools of Music, which is the music accrediting body, which our program is. Um, we uh, are very involved during this time in completing something called the HEADS Report, which stands for Higher Education Arts Data Surveys. And that is a statistical uh, survey that has numerous portions um, uh, data about our faculty, our staff, our students, our budget, all the resources under our control, and it's very detailed. Um, and the, the reason we do this is we submit this every year at the end of January, but it's kind of a really cool thing because what happens is all the accredited institutions submit this data, they're required to, and then um, the National Association of Schools of Music creates these um, uh, surveys based on um, all the information that schools submit. And uh, so any member of an ASM actually has access to this data so we can see, for example, um, how schools of similar size and um, similar type institutions um, are doing compared to, to us um, in terms of budgets, salaries, uh, student enrollment, and things like this. Of course, we, it's, it's a summary, but it is very, very useful um, to kind of see where everybody is um, nationally speaking. So this is what the HEADS data surveys look like. There's a table of contents. It has all these sections that we have to complete. It's information about our music units, faculty data, student data, finances, all the resources under our control. As you can see, I have completed a lot of it. Some sections are still left to do. This takes hours to complete, and there's a lot of information where I have to ask other offices on campus for their input, and so I have to wait for them to give me that information. I'm just going to click on a section that is not complete right now, which is uh, projected budget. And here it is. Yeah, that's that a series. Um, another thing about accreditation is some of us are um, involved in accreditation itself. So for example, I'm one of individuals who serve as an evaluator, meaning I get sent to different institutions to evaluate them uh, during their um, re-accrediting or accrediting processes. And um, 
as part of that visit, I have to go on site and visit with them. But prior to going, there is a self-study that they submit that I review. And so I'm currently reviewing one such self-study. Um, so it's another accrediting thing that happens in January. Like all other faculty, I am also busy creating syllabi and planning my courses and doing my favorite thing, which is starting to teach my students. In addition to teaching solo piano, I am also thrilled to welcome back my wonderful students in group keyboard skills. So there's kind of a lot of different things involved during this time. Um, I would say that being an administrator is not an easy job. It is not a job for everyone. Um, I do think it is a necessary job. I don't see how um, departments could run really without someone coordinating all these different matters. Um, but I think no matter how difficult it may be, there is this best part about this job and that is being able to help students. When I'm able to assist a student who is, for example, thinking about dropping out of school because they don't have enough money to pay for it and I'm able to find a scholarship somewhere to help that person stay in school, that is the greatest gift that I can really receive and it really makes my week, my month, my year. And so that joy um, of being able to help people, particularly students, receive an education and, and study music and pursue their passion is, to me, it's priceless. And it really makes all the hard times um, worthwhile. I will say this, sometimes people ask me, will being an administrator affect um, your professional life? And I would say absolutely it does. There's no way around that. Um, it will affect your professional activities. So it, it, I have to really kind of fight for my own music making, for my own performing career uh, in terms of the things that kind of fall on my desk. And um, it does affect your teaching in that there have been many times where my own classes were affected because I had to deal with some kind of a um, emergency situation, <laughs> which literally, uh, had to have priority at that particular time. And there have been times in my professional performing career where I was on tour, abroad, uh, getting ready to play a concert, and I sometimes I'm not even on contract. <laughs> um, and um, I had to kind of drop what I was doing and, and uh, address some kind of a crisis, you know, half an hour before I had to go on stage. Um, Administrators are in an interesting position. Uh, the ones of us who are department chairs, I would, I would speak for myself. We, um, I'm not a 12 month contract employee. I'm not an 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. employee, but you kind of find yourself um, being in both worlds. So I am available to offices eight to five who are open eight to five, and that's when they kind of expect to uh, kind of work with me at the same time i am available to everyone who is on a different contract like faculty members who do not work from eight to five and they may work on nights and weekends and whenever and so as a chair you really kind of find yourself working all the time and it is hard to maintain a balance and to draw boundaries and to um, find space for your own uh, creative activities and and to really make sure that your students also um, as a professor to make sure that your students feel like their time is their time and um, I, I really try to work on that and, and really try to not have my teaching interrupted if at all possible sometimes it's not but I do fight for both my own creative activities but also to make sure that my students have the best educational experience and do not have to compromise uh, their music making because their teacher is a department chair. So on days when I'm feeling particularly stressed out about administration and life, I come here, walk across this balcony for a second just to remind myself 
what it's all about. So these are just some things to think about and um, some things that are on my mind right now. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about administration, about being a department chair, um, anything like that, I'll be more than happy to address anything I've said here in, in more depth. Uh, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.